Hello there, Julie Quinn here. I'm going to show you some basic elements of um, Canvas's Great Center and compare them to what we've got in um, Blackboard right now. So you can see some of the differences and you can see some of the similarities and some of these sort of advanced features that Canvas will offer for faculty. So at the moment, you probably see something very similar uh, from what's on the screen to what you may have as you start to build a class. Obviously, we don't have any students in here yet this is just one of my summer shells that I've been you know just sort of tinkering with for the for this video series you've got some of the columns for assignments that I've created and I'm going to show you one of the way one of the quick ways to um, create a gradable column you'll notice that unlike in Blackboard there's no manual column button here you can't just add manual columns everything has to be labeled in an assignment but once you realize that then it becomes really easy to actually go ahead and set it up. So I'm going to go into the class and I'm going to go to my modules. This is one of the two places where you can add content, right? Um, you can go directly into the assignment itself, but you want students to find gradable columns if it's something that they're submitting. So for example, um, we're going to uh, add an assignment that's new versus something we've already used. We'll call it best essay. What I've just done is created a placeholder. Now, students won't see it yet um, until you give it a point value in the Grade Center and you make it publishable here. If you click Publish before you finish it, though, students can see this link, but there's nothing that there's there's not enough there yet. There are no directions, no point value, no submission limitation. So let's do that. I clicked on the title, and now I'm going to edit it to give it a point value. So point value is 15 I like percentages and the default is to count it toward the final grade once we do all of this and and these other settings are in my assignments video so you could go to that and see it and see me discuss those click Save now this was called best essay <laughs> let's go to the Grade Center and see if we can see best essay I gotta go to my test one and Let's refresh it. There is best essay right there. Remember, we published it in the module and we gave it a point value. Okay, so once it has a point value, it belongs in the grade center. Okay, so here's my test student. Here are the assignments that have been created so far. And you can see that I set everything to percentages. Let me go into a current grade, grade center uh, where this is a, a, a class where all my student names are, are hidden. You can see that I'm pretty consistent with um, all of my grades here. This feedback one, this is not anything I'm grading. It was just something that I wanted my students to privately submit to. When students submit files, you'll see the little file mark there. When they just type in a, the, the, like a, a field, you see the, the T. And for students who didn't do it, they didn't do it. So my grade center and best practices, would I would recommend for best practices that you keep your grades consistent. If you use percentages in one column, use percentages in all of your columns okay so now I'm going to go back to um, the other one the grade grade book for my um, building class when you want to go in you can see this little indi in, uh, indicator over here is the turn it in turn it in has now been activated so you can see um, uh, there are um, a similarity scores for some students you can click into the field and get the little basic window of a grade for students Okay, this is the file that the student submitted. Um, you can give them a grade. You can say, you know, 85%. And then watch what happens. If you're in the mini grader and you haven't expanded it to speed grader, even though you type in percent the first time, it actually will multiply it times 10. You do it one more time and it fixes it. That's a weird tick, just so you know. And then there's a comment feature here on the bottom. So if a student submitted it in their comment, they said thanks, and you said you're welcome, and then here's one more comment, here's one final, we'll say one final. It just appears as a trail of comments in there. Now I'm going to go back in one more time, and there it is. But uh, it would probably be better, and if you have 25 students, and you have a whole um, column of grades to grade, to do it via the speed grader. So when you click into speed grader, you get to see your comments again, and you can still add more comments. You've got the file if they uploaded a file, or you have the text if they upload if they just typed in text. Now you can write on these, and I went over a little bit of this in the assignment video before. 
you know, you can highlight parts, you can, you know, leave, leave questions and you can leave markings on the file. But in a minute, I'll show you how to download all files at one time, which is um, a nice way outside of this one. You can download all 25 student um, uh, Word documents. And then I like to use um, Word bubble commentary to leave feedback. Um, so if you want to learn how to do that and all the different options you can do with that, especially if you teach in the humanities, let me know. And I can give you a tutorial on that, or maybe I'll even create a video to do that. But when you're in here, what's nice is that the speed grader doesn't mess up that percentages. So say the student got a 75. Now it updates 7.5 out of 10 because the assignment's worth 10 points and they got a 75% of that submission. So you know you're good to go and it shows you that those two views. Remember, this was like primary and secondary view in discussion board um, if you had those settings set up. Now, what's really neat in here is there's there's a lot of sort of metadata. Um, you've graded one of one. It keeps track of where you're at. It even shows a class average. In addition, you can navigate to the student whose name comes before this, the student whose name comes after this, or you can pull down here. And what's nice is you'll see a list of student names, and there'll be little green dots or little dots. I forget what color, green or orange, where to show you that a student has submitted. So you can hop around to just the students that have submitted. So that's neat. When I give feedback and I download and I'm like, hey, you did, you know, X and Y in your submission. And I want them to know that I can leave a general comment and then I attach the word file of the document um, where I left inline commentary in Word. And that's how I give my students feedback. So they'll see their feedback by clicking on the file. It's much faster for me to use Word. Um, or do you use maybe download them as PDFs and, and use my bamboo ink pen than to write in here with my mouse. This is just really awkward. And at the moment, the um, this this is this is bot, the, the this is the old Crocodoc feature that we used in, in Blackboard before they updated it to box feature. Um, but it doesn't work with your pens. So if you have like an electronic pen that you like to write on PDFs and leave handwritten notes, it does not work in this feature. That's why I download everything as a Word document. And uh, I save it as a PDF, I leave all my comments, and then I upload that back in, and my students have my inline feedback. That's usually how I do it. So you can attach a file, but here's what's cool. Media comment. If you want to leave a, a, um, a video, say you are a speech professor or you're a foreign language professor, and you want the students to see your face, Maybe you're, you're making a particular sound, but you want them to see, like you're doing F or V sounds, you want them to see your mouth as, as you're doing it, you're teaching them to do a certain thing. Uh, you can also do um, speech recognition here. So speech recognition means you talk and it types out. Let me show you. I'm going to click the record button. Click allow. You may have a pop-up that says use your microphone. Okay, I'm going to leave you feedback on your file, and I think you did a really good job. So let's start with page one. Now that is pretty neat, right? So you don't constantly have to type all of this out to give them textual feedback. And the, 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 the recognition works beautifully. So if you do the media comment, you could either do um, record media, and I believe you can record video or audio uh, in here. Okay, so they adjust your mic or your webcam. So these are all of the different ways you can leave nice layered feedback. And in essay one, you could do feedback in the file. Essay two, you could just you could do audio comments. Essay three, you know what I mean? So you can do uh, you can layer your feedback in a variety of ways. Um, and I've even gotten to the point where I've asked students, well, what feedback would you prefer? Do you want me to read some of your text to you? Do you like to have the inline comments so it's easier for you to find those? What, what would you prefer? And then they feel like they're getting a more personalized experience. And of course, that's easier when you have a smaller group of students to do. But this is all possible with the grades. So let me show you um, how to download files from grades and how to sort of organize your grade columns. And I think that'll be good for this intro to grades. So to download, let's go to the, the grade center. So I have a file in here. So in the at the top of the heading, so anyone where you've got students that have submitted, you can just go to this little um, button right in the, the header of the column and you get assignment details. Another way into SpeedGrader, here's message students who 
haven't submitted yet as a reminder, maybe it's due in a couple of hours. You've also got grade options, so you can send quick emails to students after you've graded it if, if maybe they didn't score so high to, hey, come meet you during office hours. None of that, well, the message students one was not in Blackboard. You can curve grades, but I don't recommend it because you can never bump out of the curve grades. Now, download submissions. So you just click download submissions and anything that's been a text document or uh, a file can be downloaded into a zip. So I go into this, I just click on all of them, I copy it and I can save it onto my desktop. Downloading all of the files, even if I have 25 of them, takes under a minute. So it doesn't add more time to me and then I have copies of everything. One of the other things that I want to show you is you can reorganize your columns just by dragging them and moving them around. And you see how that 85 moves with it. So in Blackboard, you had to go to like manage and then column organization and then you had to drag around and then you had to click submit. So Canvas is better uh, as far as organizing. In addition, you can shrink, I don't know if I went over this yet, but you can shrink the size of the, the, the column width and we weren't able to do that before. So you've got individual views where you can look up particular assignments or you can look up um, individual students. You've got where you can hide student names, um, and that's what I did in my other one. You can arrange columns in a bunch of ways. You even have a notes where you can leave general notes for students. Um, or not notes for students, it's actually notes for yourself. If you know, Especially maybe at the end of the semester, and you want to do that, you can have this sort of note column. I, I don't anticipate using it myself, but all of these bells and whistles are built into the grades for you to, um, I guess, be encouraged to use them more. So in a nutshell, you cannot gr create a grade, a graded column in the grades. You have to create an, uh, a, it has to be in the assignments area, right? And then you give it a point value and you can organize it however you like. Um, reach out to me if you have any questions as you start to tinker with this. It will be more real once you start to see your students in there. Um, but uh, let me know if you have any questions. I hope you have fun with Canvas Grades.